Hello again to all subscribers and listeners of this channel. You're listening to Obsidian Radio. And today's video is going to be a review of Attack on Titan Season 3, Episode 3, entitled Old Story. This is another slow episode that reveals quite a bit about the past. And when I say the past, I'm talking about Historia's past, Commander Irwin's past, and some more truth about the race or rice family, royal family. So... Let's get to it. First thoughts. So here are my first thoughts about this episode. They were, well, damn, that's a shitty childhood. And what I mean is I'm talking about Historia. And basically the way she's designed, the way I see I'm going to design her character, she doesn't at first look like the type that would have grown up that way. But what her own father had done to her and her mother, the way they, the way that she treated her, that is some incredibly weak and horrifyingly wrong shit. But whole, like, wow. Very interesting. Also, those high-level military police and the supposed royalty of the city are some sadistic and very sick people. And I think Erwin's dad was onto something. Too bad the MPs most likely did kill him. Or what they most likely did to him. But overall, I'll say this episode had lots of good character development. Not as intense or as exciting, but very good backgrounds on certain characters. Very depressing, though. But let's go on. So as far as the plot. So the episode opens up with Historia internally monologuing about her childhood. She breaks down what her mother was like, what her mother did, and how they interacted with each other. The little bit of interaction that they did have. And unfortunately, for whatever reason, Historia's mother was extremely distant from her, even to a certain extent. Actually, no, for a long time, was completely absent for from Historia's life for quite some time. Although we now know that she's most likely the, um, basically she's Rod Rice's baby mama. <laughs> Historia is the illegitimate child. She's not considered part of the true royal family since she's not a child of Rod Rice's wife. So... Basically, Historia's mother's the mistress. It's just, but That's a whole other issue. We're going to some Maury Povich type stuff right now. Whatever. Let's continue. So, during her monologuing, we go through a scene where a very young Historia tries to play with her mother when she when her mother's sitting by a tree. I can't remember, I can't remember her mother's name, but her mother's sitting by a tree reading, and Historia tries to like hug her and jump on her or whatever, and Historia gets violently thrown away. Her mom walks away crying, Saying something about how she would have ended it if she wasn't such a coward. The next scene, we see her walk away into the distance towards the forest. Out of Historia's life for years. Years later, Historia's mother and father enter back into her life. She is told that she'll be living with him instead. But later, Kenny Ackerman, Kenny the Ripper, shows up. He murders Historia's mother, slitting her throat directly in front of Historia. A very young Historia, by the way. Now, he's about to murder Historia until Rod Rice, or Rod Race, proposes to change her identity and hide her existence away instead of murdering her, or allowing her to be murdered. We flash forward to the current situation where Historia's father is hugging her while Aaron lies unconscious next to them. Next, we see Sonus confront his fellow MP in their cell. I can't remember this guy's other name, or this other guy's name. But Sonic is confronting his uh, partner MP inside the prison cell, only to have Hanji explain to him that he was the one that let loose the information about the race family. Next, we see Hanji explain to Captain Levi and his squad that Aaron is most likely going to be eaten by a Titanized Historia. The scouts split up and head towards the race estate to find Aaron and Historia before this happens. Next, we see another sad flashback. This time, it's Commander Irwin's telling Captain Pixis what Irwin's father told him about the royal family when he was young. Irwin's father explains that he believes that they are not the real royal family, the one that's ruling now, the one that's like the one that's like the figurehead, the one that everybody sees. That's not the true royal family. The actual royal family is being hidden, and that the original king, King Fritz, somehow went over the entire land and erased everybody's memory in some way. 
And that was the idea that Erwin's father came up with. He couldn't prove it, but that's what he thinks what was happening. The day after Erwin's father told him this, Erwin's father is found dead. And Erwin was pretty sure that the royal family and or the military police had his father murdered. And for that, he wants to avenge his father, his father's death, as well as punch the military police and expose the fake royal family that he is convinced is a fake royal family. Unfortunately, the military police believed that Demo Reeves was murdered by members of the scout regiment. This isn't true, we know this, but the military police spread this lie anyway. Soon, the military police are fanning the forest searching for the scouts. The episode ends with the military police in the forest getting dangerously close to Levi and his squad. Interesting things that I noticed. Three major things I noticed in this episode. A little more nuanced, but very interesting nonetheless. One, Rod Race, Historia's father, comes across as a really cowardly, dishonorable leech. Like, I get what he's trying to do, but it's hard to like his character once you realize what he's actually about. If I got this right, and I'm pretty sure I got this right, Historia is the illegitimate child of Rod Race because he was basically having a relationship outside of his marriage with another woman, Historia's mother. He has Historia's mother killed in front of her and then almost has Historia killed. But he spares Historia. All his other children, I guess, I don't know what happened to them. Maybe they got killed too, but he spares Historia. And then years later, he decides to use her to turn her into a titan to devour Aaron and keep the titan powers that Aaron has within the race family bloodline I think that's what he's trying to do, which is interesting considering how he didn't care at all when his mistress got her throat slit in front of his youngest child, or what I assume is his youngest child. So, yeah, there's a lot of psychopathy and just weird behavior coming across from this guy if you really pay attention. But, yeah, he's a really self-centered user asshole excuse for a father to have. And Historia doesn't seem to yet realize how selfish and or even dangerous her father's mentality really is. Disgusting. The second thing I noticed. The military police are really a bunch of higher up, overpaid, lazy, dishonest scumbags. Which is pretty reminiscent of the type of things we see in real governments in real life. The military police, they beat Pastor Nick to death. They covered it up. They found out about Dima Reeves' murder and immediately blamed the scout regiment when the scout regiment is probably some of the strongest, most loyal, most honorable group of people in the entire storyline and probably least likely to do that. But the military police, they don't care. They'll put the blame on them anyway to cover their ass. Whatever. And the entire time, they begin getting these secret orders, both from the real king to pretend to follow the fake king and keep the entire civilization behind the walls trapped from the truth about humanity's past. This is some messed up stuff. Good writing, but really messed up when you think about how close this is to reality. When you look at real actual governments throughout human history. Huh. Third thing that I noticed that was interesting. Historia and Erwin Smith had very troubling childhoods. Childhoods that, that, as far as I'm concerned, flirted with them both being killed multiple times. It's surprising that they didn't get killed all those times in their childhood. Really tragic, yet it makes for very good character development, as far as I'm concerned. Animation quality, as usual. The animation is top-notch, as always. This is despite the fact that there isn't much action for this episode. But I'm not complaining. I I still thought the animation was really on point so far. Best about the episode? The best thing in this episode was seeing some of the things that shaped Historia Race and Irwin Smith's mentality while they were small children. You get a better idea of why they act the way they do and why they interact with other people the way they do when you see what they were like when they were little. Worst about the episode? Eh, there's really nothing bad about the episode at all. I mean, you could say the episode was a little bit slower, less action, but that's not really a bad thing per se. That's just something that's going to be a consequence of telling more and more story, giving us more background, and giving us more characterization. So as far as I'm concerned, not really any complaints about the episode. My favorite scene, I don't really have a favorite scene in this episode because, again, there's so little action. 
nothing crazy or dynamic happened. Nothing really stood out to me in terms of action or suspense. So, I feel like this episode was way more cerebral overall. overall, But there really wasn't a standout scene, per se. So, the entire episode was more mellow. And a more mellow look at what shaped the mentality of two major characters in this arc. So, nothing really to choose from. As far as a 1 to 10 score, I'll give this episode about an 8.5. Maybe a 9, somewhere around there. And the reason why I give it an 8.5 or so is because... I minus one point because there wasn't much that happened in terms of action. But again, that's not a bad thing. That's just a lack of things that I'm used to in other episodes. But again, that's not a big deal. And then a half a point, I guess, because I couldn't really think of a favorite scene. But again, this episode didn't need a favorite scene. The entire episode was basically breaking down some more characterization, more plot, and more background for certain characters to help drive the story along. So it's still a very good episode as far as I'm concerned. Overall summary... Overall, it was a pretty good episode. Another slower episode. But as I've said before, these slower episodes are important because they bring us more backstory and more character development. So don't count episodes like this out. And I can't wait to see what happens next as Aaron wakes up next to the story and her dad in whatever place the or estate that the race family is in charge of. So with that being said, that's all for now. Please like, subscribe, share, and donate to support this channel. You all have a nice day. I'm out. Peace.